Good morning, my dear students. Welcome to our Swaraj Yadav class. Hope you are very happy and hope you are studying all the lessons regularly. Okay. In the last class, we studied about some important theories. What are the theories we have studied in the last class? The first theory is Lamarckism theory. Second theory, Neo-Lamarckism. Third theory, Darwinism. Fourth theory, Neo Darwinism, and the fifth theory, Mutation theory. So, totally five theories we have studied or we have completed in the last class. Hope you all studied these five theories. Okay, my dear students, today we are going to study about four important topics. Okay, so today we are going to study about four important and small topics. The first topic is one theory. So first today, first we are going to study about one more important theory. Name of this theory is called Modern Synthetic Theory. So today our first title is first consensus is Modern Synthetic Theory. See. Modern synthetic theory means a group of after a Darwin's period. Okay? So after Darwin's period, many scientists or many naturalists discovered some new facts related to the evolutionary methods or evolutionary process. So a group of people togetherly proposed this modern synthetic theory. The important people are C. Wright. Fisher, Huxley, Haeckel, Dobson's guys. So, like this, many people, okay, many people or many naturalists togetherly introduced this modern synthetic theory. And this modern synthetic theory consists of five important basic factors. Okay, so there are five important factors are present in this modern synthetic theory. And already I told you this theory is based on the new discoveries. New discoveries means discovered discoveries after Darwin's period. After Darwin's period. Okay. So now we are going to study about all these five basic factors of this modern synthetic theory. The first factor is gene mutation. First factor is gene mutation. Gene mutation means changes in the structure of gene is called gene mutation. Okay, changes in the structure of a gene is called gene mutation, and this gene mutation is also known as point mutation. Also known as point mutation. So if any changes takes place in the structure of a gene it leads to some changes in the phenotypic character or phenotype. So if any changes take place in the phenotype, automatically it produces more variations in the young ones or progeny. So I'm saying I repeat this first factor. The first factor is gene mutation, meaning the changes in the structure of G. Okay, so this gene mutation is also called as, also known as point mutation. According to this first basic factor, if any changes takes place in the structure of a gene, it leads to some changes in the phenotype. And if any changes takes place in the phenotype, automatically it produces more variations in the progeny. Progeny means here the ones. Okay, so now we completed the first basic factor. And the second basic factor is chromosomal mutation. The second one is chromosomal mutation. Here, changes in the structure of chromosomes. Changes in the structure of chromosome is called chromosomal mutation. Changes in the structure of chromosome means uh, deletion, addition, okay, deletion, addition, then translocation. So these are the, some of the abnormalities in the chromosome structure. 
So here chromosomal mutation means changes in structure of the chromosome. It is called chromosomal mutation. So if any changes takes place in the normal structure of a chromosome, it leads to some changes in the phenotype. And finally, it produces more variations in the young one. Hope you understood that. The third basic factor of this modern synthetic theory is genetic recombination. Genetic recombination. See, you all know the cell division. Mitosis cell division. So during the cell division, because of crossing over, so crossing over is one of the important process takes place during the cell division. So during the cell division, because or due to this crossing over, some changes takes place in the structure of genes. So the genes position is altered. Genes positions are altered. Understand a few? So it leads to some variations in the year one. So this is the third factor, basic factor in the modern synthetic year. Understand a few? Then the fourth one is natural selection. The fourth one is natural selection. According to this basic concept or basic factor, Nature will not produce any variations. Okay, nature will not produce any variations. But once any variations or once any changes occur, automatically it leads to some genetic variation or genetic changes. So according to this concept, the nature will not cause any changes. But once any changes is takes place, it leads to some variations in the genetics. This is not you. So this is the fourth important basic factor of this model synthetic theory. Then the last one, reproductive isolation. Reproductive isolation. See, reproductive isolation means because of some reasons, the interbreeding between the two closely related organisms is prevented or stopped. This is called reproductive isolation. This is called reproductive isolation. Here the reasons may be uh, the sex differences in the size of the sex cells or differences in the sexual characters, behaviors. So because of these reasons, the reproduction or the interbreeding between the two post related organisms is prevented or stopped. Understand my difference? So now we have completed one more theory, the modern synthetic theory. So this theory was proposed by a group of scientists and this theory consists of five important basic factors. These are the five important basic factors. The first factor is called gene mutation, second one is chromosomal mutation, third one genetic recombination, fourth one natural selection, and the last one is reproductive isolation. Understand my students? Then. Our next topic is natural selection. The natural selection. See, according to this natural selection, when a organism getting a adaptation power, that organism can live in the world or in the earth. Because the nature is selecting the organisms based on some adaptive character. If some adaptive characters are present in the body of an organism, that organism is selected by the nature and that organism can live and that organism only can produce more young ones. They can increase the population. So natural selection meaning because of based on some adaptive characters, nature selects some organism to live as a successful organism. Okay. One of the example, best example to explain this natural selection is industrial melanism. 
industrial melanism. Listen very carefully. So by using this industrial melanism, we can easily understand or we can easily explain this natural selection process. See, one insect or one moth, name of the moth is called pepper moth. Pepper moth. Moth means you all know it's look like uh, insect. Okay, see. Pepper moth. This one of the famous moth living in England. And there are two different colors of this moth is available. Okay. So black color and white color. So black color and white color moths were live in England once upon a time. Once upon a time means here yeah, before the industrialization. Before the development of industries in England, both white color and black color moths were lived in England. Were lived in England. And, and I forgot to explain about the scientific name of this pepper moth. The scientific name is Piston butillaria. Okay. Piston butillaria is the scientific name of this pepper moth. So two colors are available: black color and white color. Two colors are Colors are available and both colored moths were lived in England before industrialization or before the development of industries. Just a few. Then, before the development of industry or before the industrialization, the white color moth only highly available. The nature selected the white color moths only because. Before the industrialization or before the development of industries, maximum the walls of the building is white in color. Walls of the building was in white in color. So when a white color moth is attached on the wall of a building, it can easily escape from their predator or enemies. The enemies cannot find the this moth. Okay, so just you imagine see it's a white color wall. When one white moth is sitting on this white color board, we cannot easily identify because the background color is white color. So that white color moths only selected by the nature before industrialization. Before industrialization, because with the help of this white color, so it so is it is an adaptive character. So the presence of this white color is adaptive character of this moth. So with the help of this white color or the help of this adaptive character. They can escape from their enemies, and they they lived as a successful organism before the industrialization. Hope you understood. But after the industrialization, okay, after the development of many industries in England, the black color moths only built develop. The black color moth population only increased. The white color moth population reduced because. From the industries, more smokes are emitted or released. So all these smokes are covered on the outer surface of the trees. Outer surface of the trees. So the outer surface of the trees become dark in color because of the over deposition of smoke from the industries. So the outer surface of the trees is black in color. The reason is deposition of more smoke from the industries. Now this black color moth. Is sitting on the on this tree, and now they can protect their body, or they can escape from their enemies, because the color of the body is black, and the color of the tree also black. So the black color background is supporting this black color moth to escape from their enemies. Understand? So when a white color moth is sitting on this black color tree. The enemies can easily identify and kill that white color moth. Question of you. So after the industrialization or after the development of industries, this black color moth species increase. Okay, is increased. So the population of this black color moth is increased. Understand of you? Understand? So this is one of the. the so the color here, here this uh, black color is one of the adaptive character of this black moth. So the help of these adaptive character, only they can escape from their enemies and they can live as a successful organism. Understand? Are you understand? So I hope you all understood this natural selection. Understand? Then next one is artificial selection. Art 
artificial size. Here, artificial size means the human beings nowadays we are using more amount of natural resources. We are destroying the natural resources like forest, air, water, land. Okay, like this natural resources are destroyed or overused by the human activities because of the human activities. And we are using more amount of chemicals for our agriculture plant, pesticide, herbicide, like that, different types of chemicals also we are applying to the plant species. Understand? So this is one of the example for this artificial science. And the human beings, from the past hundred years, different varieties of dark species are culturing by the human beings. Different, we can nowadays we can see different varieties of dogs, but the ancestors of these different varieties of dogs are single. Okay, single. Ancestors. So all these different varieties of dogs are evolved from a single ancestral dog, single ancestor species. Understand? So with the help of today's scientific technology, the human beings we can create different varieties of dog species within a short period. But at the same time, the nature can produce new varieties of dog species, new varieties of species because the nature has different varieties of natural source like this forest, river, water, land, like this, different varieties of natural source are available. So with the help of this natural resource, the nature can produce a new varieties of organisms. So now we completed this artificial selection also. Then, next one is adaptive radiation. Adaptive radiation. So, only more than two marks. What is meant by adaptive radiation? Same. Adaptive radiation meaning the evolutionary process by which one new species is evolved or produced from an ancestral species and the newly produced species adapted to live in a new habitat or new living place so it is called adaptive radius so adaptive radius means a process by which a new species is evolved from a single ancestral species and the new species adapted or they can live in a new environment or new habitat or new living place. So this is called adaptive radius. This is called adaptive radius. So in your book there are two examples are given for this adaptive radius. The first one is a Darwin finches. So the first example for this adaptive radiation is the Darwin sponges. See, Darwin sponges is a bag. Okay, it's a very small bag. The ancestor of these Darwin sponges were lived in two million years ago. Two million years ago, and during this period, there are fourteen different varieties of Darwin sponges were lived in the bag. Listen very carefully. The ancestors of the Darwin finches were lived in the world 2 million years ago, and during that time, there are 14 different varieties of Darwin finches were lived in the world. 14 different varieties means the, all the Darwin finches show some variations in their uh, body size, in their beak size, okay, in their food behavior. Food behavior means some Darwin finches eat fruits. Some Darwin finches ate the nectars from the plants. Okay. Some Darwin finches ate the nuts, seeds. Like that, the food behavior of the Darwin finches of finches also differ. Understand a few? Understand a few? Then, see. Darwin's observe the reason for the shape and size of the beaks of these Darwin finches. See. He has done some experiments, some researches, and finally Darwin observed the reason 
for the shape of the beak of this garden finch is one G. Name of this gene is called A L X one G. A L X one G. So this gene only responsible for the shape of this beak of garden finch. If any changes or if any mild mutation occur in this gene. It leads to some changes in the beak of the dorsal fishes. It leads to some changes in the beak of the dorsal fishes. Understand, my dear students? So, dorsal fish. There are fourteen different varieties of dorsal fishes. Where lived in the world? Okay, and they show many variations in their body size, body shape, then beak size, beak shape, food behavior. In every character, they show some variations. Okay. Here the genes responsible for the shape of the beak is called A L X O G. If any changes occur in this or if any mutation occur in this gene, it leads to the changes in the shape of the beak. Understand of you? Then, second example for this adaptive radiation is marsupials in Australia. Okay, marsupials in Australia. And one placental animals in North America. Placental animals in North America. See, this is the second example. Marsupials in marsupials means the some animals you can see some animals having some pouch-like structure near the abdominal region to bear their young ones. So these animals are called the marsupial animals. Okay, then then placental animals. Okay, placental animals are animals which are laying young ones, or called placental animals. Actually, the marsupial animals living in Australia and the placental mammals living in North America, these two are belongs to same species. Belongs to same species. They are both of them belong to two subclasses. Two subclasses, and the ancestors of these two organisms is single, similar. Understand? And they were separated. Okay, they were separate. These two organisms were separated from their common ancestor hundred million years ago. Hundred million years ago. Understand? Right, you. So two animals are there. One is marsupial animal, another one is placental animal. Marsupial animal living in Australia, placental animals living in North America. But their ancestor is similar. From the ancestor, they were separated before hundred million years ago. Let's have a few. But their characters, okay, food behavior, locomotions, okay, facing environmental condition, everything is similar for these two organisms. For these two organisms, then see nowadays because of in spite of this presence of these similar character or same characters, there are two hundred species. Okay, two hundred different varieties of marsupial species living in Australia, and more placental species living in North America. Understand a few? Understand a few? So these marsupial animals adapted to live in Australian environmental condition, and here these placental animals. Adapted to face the environmental conditions of North America. Understand? But both of them belong to this single ancestral parents. Understand? Few. So now we completed two examples for this adaptive radius. The first one is dormant fishes, and the second one is marsupial animals and placental animals. Marsupial animals of Australia and placental animals in North America. Okay, my dear friends. So I hope you all understood this adaptive radiation. So adaptive radiation meaning the process, the evolutionary process by which a new organism is evolved from a a single ancestral species, but the new species, newly produced species, adapted to live in a new environment or new habitat is called adaptive radiation. Is called adaptive radiation. Understand? Let's learn few. Then now we are going to study about one more topic. Name of that topic is
origin and evolution of human beings so now we are going to study about the evolutionary process of human beings see human beings evolved in the world during the jurassic period during the jurassic period that means before uh, 210 million years ago so our first ancestors were lived in the world 210 million years ago First of you and maximum our first ancestor were lived in asia and africa asia and african countries and the human beings are superior to all the other living organisms of the earth okay Okay. Listen very carefully, my dear friends. So it's one of the very important five mark question and many, many one mark questions also there. Now we are going to study about the evolutionary steps of human beings. How the human beings evolved from the ancestors. Listen very carefully. It's very, very important five mark question. Okay. See, our first ancestor is called Ramapithecus and Sivapithecus. Ramapithecus and Sivapithecus. These two, Ramapithecus and Sivapithecus, both of them are derived or evolved from another one ancestral form, they are called Dryopithecus. So, these Dryopithecus were lived in the world 14 million years ago. 14 million years ago. Listen of you. So, the first ancestor is Dryopithecus, they were lived in the world 14 million years ago. And now I explain the characters of this Triopithecus. Their body is fully covered with hair. Fully covered with the hair. And they were walk like gorilla and chimpanzee. You all know gorilla and chimpanzee belongs to monkey species. Okay. So they were walk like gorilla and chimpanzee. So these are the, some of the specific characters of this Triopithecus. The next to this Dryopithecus is Astralopithecus. This Astralopithecus ancestors were lived in the world 5 million years ago. 5 million years ago. And their brain capacity is 350 to 450 cc. Very, very important. One more question. Here after we are going to study about the brain capacity of the human beings also. So, so here the brain capacity of this Astralopithecus is 350 to 450 cc. First of you, now I explain the characters. See, this Astralopithecus were first lived in the grassland of East African countries. Grassland of East African countries. First of you, then the next character, their height is 1.5 meter, more than 1.5 meter height. Understand a few? Then the next character, bipedal locomotion. That means bipedal means they used two limbs for movement. They used two limbs for movement. They were lived in caves. They were lived in caves. And lack of chin. That means this region is absent for this ancestor. Yes, right? Then one more character, lumbar cap. The backbone present in the lumbar region. Lumbar region means hip region. Okay. So in that region, the small curve is there. Curve was there. Yes, right? So these are the characters of this astronaut. Yes. So they were lived in the grassland area of East Africa. Their height is 1.5 meter, more than 1.5 meter. Then they were, they used two limbs for movement. They were lived inside the caves and their chin region is totally absent. Their, their small curve is present on the backbone, present in the lumbar region of hip region. So, Astralopithecus. The next to this Astralopithecus is Homo habilis. Homo habilis. They were lived in the world 2 million years ago. They were lived in the world 2 million years ago. And their brain capacity, one more question, for 650 to 800 cc. 650 to 800 cc. So this is the brain capacity of this Homo habilis. Maximum they were vegetarian. They were eaten only plants food. Okay. Then 
by pedal locomotion. They also use two limbs for movement. Okay, and they use one of the special character of this homo habilis is they use tools. Okay, maximum they used sharp stones as a weapon. So these are the important characters of this homo habilis. Then, next to this homo habilis is homo erectus. They were lived in the world 1.7 million years ago and their brain capacity is 900 cc. Their brain capacity is 900 cc. Understand a few? Then, there are some important characters of this homo erectus. They are closely similar to human. That means they look like human. They closely look like to human. And the skull region is flat. The skull region is flat. And they were yet meat. Flesh eaters. So these are the important characters of this Homo erectus. Then next to this Homo erectus is Neanderthal man. Neanderthal man, they were lived in the world. 34,000 to 1 lakhs years ago. 34,000 to 1 lakhs years ago. So, this is the life period of this Neanderthal man. Then, their brain capacity is 100,400 cc. One more question. So, the brain capacity of Neanderthal man is 1,400 cc. So, now I explain some important characters of this Neanderthal man. They were lived in the Neanderthal Valley was located in Germany. They were lived in Neanderthal Valley located in Germany. Semi-erect. Okay, semi-erect means they can't stand or sit straightly. Okay, off straight. Must not feel. So this is one of the characters. Then the slow forehead. That means front head is a little slow. Okay, this is the next character. Then, large orbit. Orbit means the, the gravity in which the eyes are present. Okay, so here when gravity is present, this is called orbit. So the orbit is very large. Then, heavy brow ridges. That means eyebrow is very heavy. Thick hairs are present in the eyebrow. So this is next character. Then, they protect their body from the animals. They protect their body from the animals. So this is one of the special character of this Neanderthal man. They used fire. They used fire. And they know how to bury their dead bodies. How to bury their dead bodies. Then, they don't know anything about this agricultural practice and domestication of animals. They don't know how to cultivate the plants. They don't know how to cultivate the animals in their home, native places. Okay? So, these are the characters of this Neanderthal man. The next to this Neanderthal man is called Cro Magnon. Okay, Cro Magnon. This is the most tough form of human beings. Okay, so the human beings started to talk during this period. Then, so they were lived in the rocky region of Cro Magnon. It is present in France, it is located in France. Then, they are the ancestors of modern Europeans. Okay, today's European people's ancestor is this group, Magnus. They adapted to live in different climatic conditions. Okay, so this generation of human beings, they adapted to live in different climatic conditions. And they know how to draw paint on the wall and floor. They started to draw some pictures okay, on the wall and floors. Then the last one is Homo sapiens. The present modern human beings is called Homo sapiens. So they were lived before 25,000 years ago. Started to live before 25,000 years ago. That's not you. Then their characters. First, they developed in Africa. They developed in Africa. Sorry, they uh, started to live in Africa. Then they developed into different races. Different races. Then they started to cultivate different plant species for food. They started to cultivate different animals for many purposes. So these are the characters of this Homo sapiens. So, this uh, origin and evolution of human beings is one of the very, very important 
five mark question and moreover many one mark questions are there particularly the brain capacity of the human beings is very very important one mark question so my dear students hope you all understood today's topic today we have completed many topics first we studied about one theory modern synthetic theory then next in natural selection artificial selection adaptive radiation then finally we studied about the origin and evolution of human beings okay so study these question answers today itself and send the answer to me in the last class also many of you sent the answer really appreciate you and i corrected the answer some of the students put in put some mistakes also i corrected and told them these are the mistakes you have put there today also study these question answers and send the answer to me we we'll meet in the next class thank you